Good morning, everyone. My name is Edis Bosch, and I welcome you to a Riga Security Forum podcast. Considering how quickly the events may change around us, uh, I think it makes sense to say that we meet uh, in, on the 27th of October 2023. Uh, it's Friday, and uh, we might not know something that have already occurred by the time you are listening. So we are not aware of that. Riga Security Forum podcast, it is conversations about security, about foreign policy. It is uh, discussions with experts. It is reasoning about what is going on around us. And I am glad to welcome uh, President, the President of Latvia, Edgar Zrinkevich. With experts, it is so. The experts who are not public officials, it seems for them that it's easier because they are not so accountable and they can only be accountable uh, for their logics. But those who are public officials, their liability is broader. And then they have so much experience that uh, they well, they could write memoirs about what has happened during their um, working in a position or what they have uh, what they have experienced. Uh, and uh, how do you assess when it is time when to speak about something? It is a good question, and I think that for many people who are in positions, I agree that, uh, and if they are accountable, then it is difficult for them to speak openly. There are frames, certain restrictions. Usually the people are smart when they go to, uh, when they retire um, or elsewhere. But sometimes this, this time simply comes, and then, but, but, but only maybe later after uh, not working yet anymore in that particular position. And when they have these revelations, then maybe they already don't remember half of all the things. But you do write down something, right? You really put in the folder and you do register it for the reflection for later. Is it correct? Yes. And I will also forever remember uh, in the history, in the faculty of history, uh, in the first year of studies, there was an introduction in source research. It was history. And um, one very honorable professor about the memoirs and uh, being eyewitness, he says you should always remember one golden phrase. Nobody lies as an eyewitness. He said very, very shortly, lying as an eyewitness. And so I think that every researcher must keep it in mind that we are not telling the stories or the people are not telling the stories as they actually happened or they would be talking about what they would do or they would do differently. So let us somehow try to overcome the restrictions and um, we would like to devote this podcast for a big picture, for a bigger picture. And I offer the thesis, if I have to put a title to it, this is the thesis from what you said on op when opening the Riga conference uh, a couple of days ago, you said about this mess all around. Uh, it is mess in the world, in Europe and everywhere, or chaos, you said. And so there is, and it's difficult to find a way out of this difficult situation. And before we get to this, a uh, mess, how you formulated it, you have been long-standing or for a long time in a place where the process is you could see as in a close-up. And so this close-up is better seen by being Minister of Foreign Affairs or being a president. These are two different angles. If you're a Minister of Foreign Affairs, you are more involved in decision-making, national level, the government, European level, European Union level, that is the councils and uh, in NATO, also 
in uh, in in NATO formats with foreign affairs minister um, and also OECD and other organizations operational decisions how to vote what position to take how to react to one or another uh, event or decision president's level is um, more strategic not so much um, about the details of everyday life but it also gives an opportunity to look broader at things processes look at maybe something like i have uh, noticed that when you discuss with leaders of other states you usually see that their opinion is not so much linked to everyday life problems with some i mean their own country um, foreign affairs policies they are looking broader they look where they can strategically change one or another setup foreign affairs ministers they have their own policies of their national states and um, maybe there is agenda of uh, international organizations and the ministry generated documents and positions which of course the minister is approving but we see there diplomatic democratic democracy some elements of influence and so what about the latvian setup for latvian president in our framework does it allow also for strategic nuances to be integrated into united policy which is like the priority of uh, ministry of foreign affairs actually i think that our framework of foreign policy or how we create uh, foreign policy is more successful than maybe for other uh, states we have the great five meetings regular meetings um as um well while me being the president they have not yet occurred because we have changed these uh, several of these uh, leading positions uh, the only position having left is the uh, mr calls uh, which is the uh, head of um, uh, head of um, the parliament uh, commission and these the these meetings are where we harmonize the opinion and we meet very regularly that is one format and the other format which also has been proven to be successful is uh, parliamentary foreign affairs debates there is no report being prepared uh, but everyone is involved and of course yes also in our in our work there is uh, the head of the parliament prime minister and other positions have the foreign affairs um, uh, they they all have uh, foreign affairs advisors for all of us to be informed and have a united position in some matter or question and for many maybe it is not known but we call them ltt or it's abbreviation lines to take and in latvian that would be like guidelines or again lines to take they are very quickly created to harmonize the position in one or another difficult matter but with this grade five as you said the final word no there is no such final word usually we do discuss and we do agree of course the minister of foreign Affair, affairs is the one to propose uh, solving in one or another way um, a problem or an issue and uh, usually um, well nobody disagrees like entirely i don't think it is possible also now uh, with, with this great five but usually yes the proposal the principal proposal comes from foreign affairs minister but that is also natural it's not just 12 years i think um, since regaining independence in latvia i think already a third of of, uh, of a century has passed and maybe you have not been in, in such a close-up but i assume since uh, the end of the 90s and if you had 
well, about this broader picture, about the landscape, international landscape, um, and how the world is shaped and as it is related to us. If you had to compare the initial, the beginning, uh, the, the middle of the, of the 90s and the end of the 90s, what is the most significant? What has changed? What have been the tendencies during the period when you were present and what you had seen what are important for us as a state yes for us as a state thank you actually I feel like an old furniture now I think I just celebrated I mean it's um really fills me with joy uh, 50th birthday and uh, I do feel as if uh, actually everything is still ahead of me meaning everything just begins but um, uh, the reference point for me would be not the working in the defense in the Ministry of Defense but um, when I started working in uh, the radio Latvia or Latvian radio in the news department and the formal position name was commentator of the foreign affairs um, basically and I was going to press conferences and it was um, 1993 November until 1994 December when I went to study and but what because it was the moment when the debates were the mo like there were the hottest debates about uh, Russian army leaving Skrunda um, and about uh, pensioners and locator and this was the first decisions with nuances we played it very well it was the first time like imagine if uh, we had not agreed back then and for example this locator would have been left here Russian Right, so we would not be able to join international organizations, EU, NATO, and uh, there would be just remains of the Soviet Union. And it wasn't easy, there were hot debates, heated debates, and if you want to look at the what the atmosphere was, there's a thick book, thick, but I do advise, is Georg Sandreev's um, uh, and his memoirs. Uh, he's a former Minister of Foreign Affairs. Very well shows uh, the atmosphere back then. And the second is uh, EU and NATO uh, membership. Also then there were times when Latvia uh, almost fell out of this process where the at one point Estonians were ahead of us and uh, the other point was in NATO when um, we were a little bit stubborn we said we would not we would not devote that much budget but i i understand i i remember we generating the plan and foreign affairs ministry um we generated plan after plan and then the allies just told us look do not generate these plans. If you want to be in the organization, just do it. If not, then don't. And it is a problem in our country that we oftentimes internally cannot agree and we do not do things unless there is a large uh, pressure from outside. So what do I say? What is a good response, um, reply? to what the strategic goals are. I think that in general we have done our homework up until this very moment and which currently I believe what, what is important to us uh, and what is the main goal is for us to internally break certain barriers and move on, move forward with state um, economic development because we do really lag behind uh, a little bit but in security matters I have no doubts we do everything that is necessary okay the big question is the eastern border and that is being solved but our 
uh, economy and competitiveness is probably the basis of our security right now. If we have a better economy and we do organize um, more budget for security. It is the things uh, that are at hand and in our hands, so to say, also we can influence them. And um, more or less, there are other things that we cannot influence or impact, we can only react to them. And so getting back to the chaos in international uh, setup, and uh, now you said about the 90s, and uh, we see there was a window of opportunity for the country to do good, considering also how difficult the international um, setup seems to have been. But there were such opportunities. The state, which were friendly to us, and we wanted to be close with them, and uh, we wanted... Uh, so and then there were there were the ones which um, actually did not um, help us and from the international environment perspective the 90s really seemed and the beginning of the uh, 2000s then this was the open opportunity for us to jump into the train which we did and then also from the experience of other countries, Georgia, Ukraine. After that, jumping into that train was way more difficult. Way more difficult. And if we look at it, then we see the structural changes over the course of last 25 and 30 years, which creates this environment once again more brutal, more uh, robust, more tough. And it's not a window of opportunities anymore. It's it's like um, it's like a footbridge, you know. You have to pass it. Well, actually, I'm listening, and there is nothing more I could add. You see, maybe that is uh, a boring conversation because we do agree to each other. I will do something, then I will try to provoke. Maybe, okay, yes, maybe let us try to fight. Then in the end, but honestly, psychologically. When you relive this time, when you live in that time, when you experience it, you say, how can it be even worse? Or how can it be more crazy? But it, but it passed. We do not know how geopolitical turbulence of today will change what the people will say reflecting after 20 years. You know, 2023, it was relatively easy. Uh, Russian aggression against Ukraine. It's clear we have to fight it, but then there is something else, maybe in 20 years then. 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, here in Riga, in 2006, there was NATO summit. And then existential problem of alliance was not the member state protection, but there was some operation in Afghanistan fighting terrorism. And if NATO had not gone out of their comfort zone, or if they don't go, they are out of business. You should not go out of area, you should go, you should go out of area, then you're out of business. That, that's how it was, uh, that how it was worded in English. And, uh, and now we clearly see that we have returned to principal tasks of NATO. Unfortunately, we have to say, once again, when I was talking about the chaos, that the order that, honestly, for small states, it was beneficial based on international organizations, UN and UN uh, falling apart, and something new is actually being created, is going to be created. So, about the international order and rule, I mean, what is like the ba the basis of this order is Western countries, the United States of America, their desire and capabilities of um, maintaining such order. But what changes? Like Western countries are becoming weaker, or there's no such will anymore, willpower. A lot changes, like it or not, but. We have very strong players economically occurring. China, Africa, rapidly growing continent. We have to consider 
affairs there, demographically everything changes very quickly and very strongly. NATO, um, UN uh, after World War II was founded and all the system, they are reflecting the 1945, not 2023. The veto power is being used in Syria uh, for Ukraine and also now Israel. There have been vetoes already used and this method is applied both by the US, by China, by Russia and the uh, UN Security Council, that is the environment and UN as the system functions successfully and, and good also now. This, um, this human aid is being provided in many places but the UN peacekeeping functions, why do we not speak about it? Because it's you know, when it's bad, then we do. But if it's good, that if it's bad, you will hear it in the news. If it's good and everything is going on very well, then nobody's going to talk about it. But UN central instrument is maintaining the security and order. Also, also during Cold War, it was it was maintained. But um, but we see that there are states who want to be at the table with the rights and the uh, possibilities to impact India, uh, Brazil, in Latin America, of course, many other countries and in Africa, uh, Nigeria. Well, reforms do not occur because there is one, maybe, maybe may member uh, against some reforms. So, the veto right countries do not want any changes. So, these factors and additionally that we have um, both rules and conditions for, a, for states and we have also non-governmental actors as they are usually called. Uh, this is um, in the theory. Also Hamas, uh, terrorist organization. It is not linked and bounded by any uh, conventions. So we fought Al-Qaeda previously and other terrorist organizations. And uh, we have uh, revisionists, Russian Federation. And uh, they, they, they say we have to... They want to tear apart what was founded and established after 1991. This situation is new. And this is why the chaos is such that I am unfortunately not optimist to save what was, what was uh, before 2014. And I do agree. We, we thought then about Yugoslavia and, uh, uh, and falling apart the uh, Soviet Union and uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, well, maybe now it seems like it, it's a perfect storm, isn't it? From what you said and how you put it, I would um, I would see some tendency occurring. We have Ukraine, we have Gaza. Well, here at the door, here at our entrance, hybrid threats and the Baltic Sea threats. It is part of the tendency of chaos overall. It's crisis perimeter, you see it like that, it's not some kind of coincidence and different processes, but it's something, it's something like, not to say regularity, but a pattern. Well, yes, and uh, let us, it's maybe a European also uh, a responsibility and the Balkans, uh, the European Union cannot solve for many subsequent years creation of normal strategy to integrate the countries which are ready. Let us look at the example of North Macedonia. At some point, the country uh, had as a criteria, it was agreed, uh, talking about this uh, uh, name of the country as uh, admission to NATO and EU. NATO did admit, but suddenly when they solved one, question other um, concerns rose bulgaria north macedonia discussion about some linguistic matters i mean honestly 
if I had to explain, I could not explain what was the you know, main point of conflict, but that is significant uh, for the uh, for the parties of the disputes and the inability to agree on further expansion. I say this region and as uh, Latvia has also um, asked or called for EU to be more proactive. That is one thing and another is um, Northern Africa and um, and the third is the situation in Asia. Taiwan, uh, there is a lot of muscles that are ready to explode at some point. We have not reached yet the perfect storm conditions, but we are going towards it. Is it like a shift or is it like the rest against Europe? Is it like Europe against the rest? And we, when searching, the uh, remedy then is it strengthening the, the western um it is i mean indeed very good question is it the west europe usa canada australia new zealand uh, democratic g7 countries also japan uh, south korea they are not in g7 but uh, in general democratic and uh, thinking alike it's not the west it is part it is democracy part and then there is india brazil and latin america they also see it or they are demo democratic and see it differently and so oftentimes you see and uh, nobody will question that india or brazil uh, our democracies. The tendencies are different there, but there's. But discussing like with China, with Russia, I do not see uh, a lot of potential for economic uh, cooperation. But it's maybe more uh, symbolic, um, symbolic mechanisms. But it is. Uh, it is present. It's not democracies against authoritarian states. There are nuances. It's not just the West against the rest, but um, what I see, and maybe in some other podcasts we can discuss why, uh, due to the UN or um, Security Council dysfunctions, we can st we still want to be part of UN Security Council. Talking about uh, colleagues, uh, I did talk to colleagues uh, from African states. They are thinking about colonialism. They are talking about, there's a saying, you come with very long lectures, but uh, then you give, a, which as if give something for our development. But then other countries come and build, uh, build airports, build stadiums, and they do not ask anything and they do not lecture us. So this is about thinking, maybe supporting, maybe it's not sustainable or... Um, or in a long perspective, in a long-lasting perspective. Uh, but in, if in Latvia it is taken for granted that there's General Assembly, UN, and we need to do this or that, and it is taken for granted because we are for uh, international order, but oftentimes our problems are seen as European problems, Western problems, and they do remind that we are not interested in some of their matters. I think that we need to review our attitude towards how the West sees the world. And in the West, we also see problems with uh, elections, um, difficult situations in one or another country. In the EU, there are matters unsolved. So the West is also not as united as it sometimes seems. I would like to finalize. Thank you for this um, broader picture, you said we, you are not that optimistic if uh, we can um, overcome this uh, perfect storm or if we have even seen uh, the perfect storm conditions in all their beauty, but maybe there's some optimism uh, anyways. Uh, I, I do believe that pessimism, skepticism, without it you cannot form any policy, but I will say like that. When I have now drawn this apocalyptic picture, I would just, yes, uh, just a little bit uh, a word of uh, 
uh, comfort. Well, first of all, the understanding that both in Europe and in Northern America we need to be together, this notion it is created. After uh, Russia invading Ukraine even stronger than ever before, this understanding do rise. There are stories, we do not want to develop now the story about the sanctions, but in general there is understanding and agreement. But the, the following years are going to be difficult and gradually in Latvia, in Europe, in the West, uh, they have understood this. We have understood this. We have to increase our security, defense, military capabilities, invest in security and we would like it to be quicker and still there is a direction here and also um, in other locations. And yes, when the new system, while being created, how capable we are going to be at setting our common goals, it is going to promote the development of the system in general. We do need to remember, we cannot influence everything and everywhere in the world. I mean, the democratic states and democratic society. We do need to understand that we need to secure ourselves, our internal uh, processes, also now in the context of AI. I think many have seen, it was so interesting indeed, uh, we need to work on it, uh, on how to use the AI to impact uh, political processes by creating uh, completely uh, false and fake news. Uh, we will have to invest a lot in securing our border, uh, attitude towards migration changes everywhere in Europe and I think that this wake up uh, is occurring uh, in in the democra uh, democratic states not so quickly as we would like we will or we will attempt and try to save it and then if we are going to be able to project it to the rest of the world as it was in the 80s, I don't think so. For a while, the, the world will be divided and it's go not going to be one or two years. There are more threads we can analyze and in this chaos, but unfortunately, really, uh, today, um, uh, our time has passed and uh, we should end in Riga Security Forum today. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, for finding time today.